Okay, I'd like to look at Christian denominations, and there's lots of Christian denominations, but you've been doing lots of work on religion lately, and I think we should have a bit of a break from that. So, I need a new car. Now, that is cute, and I do like the surfboards in the back, but I don't think it's going to work for the family. So, I have nutted it down to a few different options, a Ford, a Toyota, or a Holden. Now, we have owned each one of those before. We used to have a Ford Falcon. I drove a Toyota Corolla for a long time, and of course, my husband will only drive a Holden Commodore. Now, each one of these manufacturers does have lots of types of cars, and I'm sure you could Google them all, but I have had a good look. So we've got a Mustang, a Focus, an Echo, and an Everest. I'm not sure the Yaris would really do it. It's a little bit small, so it's the hatch, at least the camera's a little bit bigger. In terms of a Holden, they all seem to start with C, which I can't really work out. There's an Apollo and a Barina. I think a Barina's a lot like a Ford Falcon, to be honest. So, what do all these cars have in common? They all have four wheels, they all have a gearbox, they all will get me from point A to point B, pretty much they'll work all right. Lots of things similar, they're basically all a car. There are some things that are going to be different. So, some of them will be a V6 or a V8, and if you're not sure what that means, you can Google it. It's just the way the engine's organised, either it's parallel to each other or in the shape of a V. And the aesthetics are different. So, a red Toyota Corolla is not the same as a red Holden Commodore. The colours on the outside are different, and all the little bits on the inside are different. So, how the aesthetics look. Basically, how pretty it is, or how manly it looks, or how girly it looks, or how things look basically look is the issue now while that was a fun you know minute of your life and you never get it back let's have a look at what we're really supposed to be doing which is the denominations of christianity remember them christianity so let's play the same game through orthodox orthodox just means traditional it just means the way things are traditionally done we also have the word catholic Catholic just means universal. They basically mean the same thing. And there was, for the first thousand years or so, one church, and they all got along perfectly well. Well, no, that's not true. They had lots of infights, and they argued amongst themselves a bit. Until in 1054, they'd pretty much had enough. And the head of the Orthodox Church excommunicated the head of the Catholic Church. Head of the Catholic Church excommunicated the head of the Orthodox Church, otherwise called the East-West Schism. Now, the Orthodox Church, the eastern side of the Roman Empire, stayed on national lines. So one of the biggest was the Greek Orthodox Church. And there's more Greek Orthodox people in uh, Melbourne, for example, than there are in Athens. Okay, Greek Orthodox is a very large church. There's lots of other Orthodox churches, though. Romanian, Ukrainian, Coptic, Syrian. There's lots more if you have a look. You'll find the Orthodox churches stayed on national lines. So the languages they use and the customs they have belong to those particular cultures. The western half of the empire was the Roman Empire. There are still different types of Catholic churches, though. There's Maronite ch um, Catholics, there's Melkite Catholics, Chaldean and Armenian. A lot of Lebanese, for example, are Maronite Catholics, and they follow exactly the same Catholic system, just have a different leader to the Roman Catholics. They have a patriarch rather than a pope. The same with the Chaldeans, the Armenians, and lots of others. We well, you know that by the 1500s, the Catholic Church had started to basically implode upon itself. It had some issues and people protested. So the group that protested are called the Protestants. So who do we have? Well, first of all, the Church of England, because Henry named himself the head of the church in England, took over all their money and all their property. But there are other groups that came along. Luther, of course, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, the Calvinists. But probably the biggest group of that is the Pentecostals. So there's lots of tiny little groups that go underneath the banner of being Protestant, then Pentecostal. So looking at this, you might think, there isn't one church, there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them. There isn't. The things they have in common are still the things they have in common. The same way the Fords, the Toyotas and the Holdens will get you from one place to another. The difference between a Greek Orthodox church and a Roman Catholic church is the aesthetics. What does it look like? In a Greek Orthodox church, you'll find icons. In a Roman Catholic church, you'll find statues. In a Church of England church, you'll find less decoration and you'll find more people in suits. More uh, preachers out the front wearing lay clothing, wearing normal clothing, as opposed to in a Ukrainian Orthodox church where you'll find a priest dressed up in multiple layers of, of decorative clothing that denote the office that he holds. Technicalities and aesthetics. What binds Christianity is far more important than what divides Christianity. So ultimately, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, and Pentecostal, which is a part of the Protestants. 
Thank you very much.